Hello, everyone. Welcome to Learn Languages HD Audio Podcast. We love to have you with us, and make sure to learn something new today and expand your horizons for a little bit. This is our first episode in 2021, and it is a fresh start for all of us. Therefore, we are going to do something a little bit different from usual. We'll be talking about you and how the alternative life conditions affect you, and how could you make it a bit more pleasant or go through it after all. So today's topic is going to be on the coronavirus crisis, but from a little bit different perspective, from a little bit different point of view. It's about the time for me to properly introduce myself as well. I'm Mina, and I'm a college student from Montenegro. At the moment, I'm studying chemical engineering at the University of Montenegro. However, it is not what brought me here, what made me worth considering for the podcast at all. For years, I've been teaching English in various forms as a volunteer. I love languages, I enjoy learning and sharing what I know. It fulfills me, inspires me, makes me feel better about myself. After taking a variety of English exams, and some of them meant for natives, I gained a different perspective on education in general. I engaged in different seminars, different associations, and for a year I've been a full-time English tutor online, working with people from all over the globe, all ages, all levels of English experience. Aside, I'm a freelance writer working on other people's blogs and aspiring to develop my own. Well, I have been working from home completely online before the coronavirus pandemic and also during it. Also, I have been a student during the pandemic. Thus, I can start this story from my own point of view. Working online brings many benefits. It gives you freedom, flexibility to manage your own hours, and it's also very comfortable. For example, on rainy days or windy days, like wind can get very strong in my city. Actually, today is very windy and cold too, but on days like this, it feels very good to be at home in comfy clothes, in warm and pleasant, not to mention that This working style cuts commuting time and gives you an opportunity to focus more on yourself, doing something you enjoy or spending time with family. There are many benefits. However, there are certainly downsides too. For me personally and for some people I talk to, motivation is a great challenge when we have all this flexibility. It's all on us. It's on you. When are you going to wake up? When you're going to go to bed? Um, When are you going to take a lunch break? Or whether or not you're taking a walk? There is so much on you to decide. And that's why many people have faced um, a certain amount of decision fatigue. Because everything you do, there are no rules, there are no routines. Everything you should decide on yourself, by yourself and you are responsible for all of your decisions which is also very stressful but after a certain time you get really people get stressed and burned out just with that decision fatigue there are limited or no options for real or eye-to-eye communication human interaction which by our biology our species needs It is hard to measure your achievements, hard to work on your own. There are some companies and employers have figured it out well and try to reward their teams and stimulated their HR department and everything, but it's not the case for everyone and not everyone had that chance. And that's why working on your own and seeing your own achievements can get quite intimidating. 
we are constantly surrounded by distractions. I have experienced several nervous breaks on the technical issues, such as the internet stops working completely, all of a sudden, unexpectedly, or a computer running into a sudden and very long update when I have a full day of lectures scheduled ahead. So those are some of the setbacks that we cannot really control and that can give us hard time when we're trying to adapt to these uh, working conditions. Studying from home partially or completely also gives you an advantage of more time for studying, like less commute, um, less time spent with friends, and thus you at least hypothetically have more time for studying. Time management is more flexible and this is an opportunity also to give a shout out to professors, teachers and other education workers who have been trying hard to accomplish their mission in cruel conditions set by coronavirus pandemic where we had to substitute the very essence of the job, the classroom, the interaction with alternatives. And students worldwide recognize these efforts and highly appreciate it. Many studies have been done on the effectiveness of these methods of living style. It for sure has been a shaping experience, professionally and privately. But one thing I got to hear a lot from students and friends studying in the United States, Japan, Thailand, South Korea, Spain, Slovenia, and other Balkans, Austria, and so on, that we are having a hard time. We are missing on experiences important for our careers. And the list could go on. We could continue listing positive and negative aspects of working and studying from home on and on. But one thing is for sure, when it keeps on going, it gets harder to enjoy the benefits the situation provides. I've seen a video just the other day where the family compared life in quarantine back in March to today's situation and it is a meme, it's interesting, it's funny video, but um, in general I could really relate to that. Although it was a parody, it was, it was meant to entertain us, but um, under it all I could really recognize a lot of truth. The overall point is that we should not be hard on ourselves. It is hard to keep up with everything that's going on. We live in fear and in the conditions that are not so natural. After the lockdowns became so normal, unfortunately, we stopped seeing articles on how to manage these conditions, how to go through the situation, ideas, benefits, advice. On the news, people don't talk about this backbone, about how the overall situation affects our day-to-day -day life. And I made this episode to point out that although this becomes normal, it shouldn't be taken like it. It should not be assumed that we got used to it. Because as we have seen, the more it goes on, the more challenges it brings. So in 2021, keep in touch with your people. Listen to each other. Help your friend with whatever he deals with. Think about yourself and your own priorities. Think again of your goals. And we as people would go through this whole thing together. As the Tiraf research has supported above presented statements, I'm going to present some advice for if you have Zoom fatigue, if you struggle with taking the exams, keeping up with deadlines at work, for if the initial excitement of working from home has worn off for you, or if you just want to make lockdown more pleasant for yourself. I will use the structures should and ought to. These are the most common model verbs to use for giving advice in English language. It's important to see a slight difference here. When we say you should go see a doctor. You should travel to another city on Friday and see what they have to offer for this issue. We should see each other more often. We have this structure should that is followed by infinitive. So you should see, you should go. There is another phrase, oath to. 
we use to infinitive, not bare infinitive as we used it with should, but to infinitive. For example, you ought to go, you ought to see. We should not forget this, this slight difference here. These are other ways to give someone a word on a problem is to use indirect questions like, why don't you travel? Why don't you go see someone? Why don't we go to the cinema next week, for example? Or you could use another structure, which is, if I were you, I would. So if I were you, I would work more to solve this problem. If I were you, I would see my friends more often. If I was in your place, like if it was my life, this is what I would do. So a good idea to give someone an advice that you really stand behind. And this statement, if I were you, this structure is a conditional statement, which at sooner or later you're going to cover in depth. But just as you know it, as an example, something that you should use and you could use to give someone advice. And when you're talking to someone in English or if you, as many other people worldwide now, started meeting friends online through different chat groups and different applications, using English as a common language is a challenge. So these are just some ideas that would help you around. So the very first advice I have for you is that you should figure out what moves you. You should figure out what feels good for you, what are your passions, what are your goals. Figure out what motivates you, what inspires you, and try to incorporate that into your daily routine. We often forget that going on and living and accomplishing something from time to time requires a bit of introspection. Seeing what you feel comfortable with, Thinking about yourself and the way you're dealing with things, the way you live, the way you work, the way you communicate, seeing what you can change or what you can be doing more of. And in this time, more than ever before, it's quite necessary to sit down and think, talk to yourself and see what you can do to feel better. And then why don't you do more of it? Another thing that is proven to be helpful in this situation and that is recommended by psychologists is to set deadlines. If you don't have specific deadlines, like I didn't have uh, when it comes to my work, I didn't have any boundaries, any rules that I should follow, for example, how much I should work, uh, what are the days I should be working, what are my working hours, everything was on me to choose. So the way to go through it successfully and with less frustration was to set my own deadlines and my own rules for the game. Psychologists say that these times when it comes to coronavirus, constant changes, checking up the news, counting the infected people, uh, listening about how many people died daily, it all brings a lot of frustration and also um, a lot of challenges and uh, an urge to adapt and to compromise. We are constantly in need to adapt. And that's where decision fatigue also comes from. So psychologists and other experts recommend that we should try to set our routines. When we set routines and rules that we go by, we are limited the number of decisions that we ought to make daily. So therefore, we will ease the tension in our brain and the place where there is awfully a lot going on in this period. It would help us with all the inner struggles and it would kind of ease our mind. So setting the routines, deadlines, and certain plans would be very beneficial. Of course, it's something that it maybe is not so familiar to you, setting a goal, and maybe then we could struggle with how to keep up with that. But once we do that successfully for at least a couple of days, we will see a great transformation and we would feel a spike 
in our motivation level. So starting with something small, with um, very simple, attainable goals and fulfilling those daily would make a good change for you, according to psychologists and many people who have experienced it already. The working from home environment or studying from home environment, as research says, this environment doesn't give many opportunities, many opportunities for rewards. If we were in the office, we could be getting incentives, we could have um, talks with our boss, with our coordinators, our colleagues. We could measure our success and our success and our work could be recognized. Psychologically, our brain works on rewards. And that's something that um, kept us going through the hard days back then when we were working in unrestricted conditions. Nowadays, we could find ways to reward ourselves. Whatever it is and whatever the area of work you're doing, whatever you consider an accomplishment, try when you achieve something to um, give yourself a little reward in any form you prefer. It's also recommended to take breaks, regular breaks. I know that when you're working from home, it's quite hard to distinguish, to make a boundary between private life and working life. It's hard to decide what the break is. It's hard to focus to work. And that's why we feel like we don't deserve breaks. But sometimes a little bit of getaway, a little bit of getaway or just forgetting, easing your mind, giving yourself a complete psychological break from everything that's going on would also help you and stimulate your further your further work. And another big thing to say is that we should not be comparing ourselves. But all of this advice stands for studying and working from home or just dealing with the situation. We have seen via social media how people used lockdown to create, to build the new routines, new habits, to try something new, to start working out, start something, start something major, write a book, whatever. People, some people made the difference, used this time effectively. However, it shouldn't It can't be that way for everyone. So as students, we should not be comparing our grades and our functioning system with our friends, Um, not in a bad way. We could consult our friends, we could see how they do and maybe ask them for advice, trying to change something in our own functioning, but we should not feel inferior to anyone just because we are not keeping the track with everything or if we are not making as much progress as someone next to us, we should not consider that a barrier or not an internal struggle. The same goes for work. Don't compare to your colleagues, don't compare to your significant others, your um, brothers, sisters. In general, don't compare to peers and to people around you because everyone has their own way of functioning. And as I always love to say, different people do things differently, different people think differently, and different people live differently. That's why you should, back to the first advice, um, think about yourself, figure out what is good for you, what makes you feel better, what excites you, what motivates you, and try to keep on going with that. So thank you for being with us in the first episode for 2021. It was a little bit different than usual, but I hope that you gained some value from this talk, that you feel better, more inspired, or more motivated to continue your day. Thank you for being with us. Make sure to learn something new today and expand your horizons for just a little bit. Have a great day. See you.